We praise the Lord. Let us bless each other. Have a peace in your heart. You are the evangelist who will save this world. You will take the land that I promised. Thank you for this glorious music. Even we live in a single day, we'll enjoy the gospel and his words, and you will be the witness and the disciple who is used by the hands of the Lord preciously. In the name of Jesus Christ, God created heaven and the earth, and the last day, He created the man. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 26 and 27, and there is purpose that He created the man. God created in His own image. And we created man. God said it's and chapter one, verse twenty-seven. God created the man in His own image, the image of God. And twenty-seven says, in His own image, He let us govern this world, and filled fill this earth, and govern and have the authority to take care of all these creatures. The most important point is that we are created in His own image. His own image means God gave us this everlasting thing. And this means again, God gave us the um, everlasting power. Why did He give this everlasting power to us? That's because in His own image we created while living on this earth, we, we were uh, bestowed His um, creatures, and we are in charge of taking care of His creatures. That's why we are created in His own image. He's given us this offer, um, the ability to take care of these things on earth. And in fact, we are just a living follow our griefs and pleasance. And we are heading toward the destructions and we are using our uh, power. The, what um, the, uh, the non-believers said, said this, is that we have a power in us. So the worldly people think that you must uh, develop your potential power in you. That's right, that God created in His own image and He let us take care of all these creatures uh, on behalf of God. And God let us communicate with Him and we our supplies is um, his power so that he he breathed into the man's nostrils the breath of life that means we are communicating with God and we are supplied that that power and the spirit so with his power, we are the spiritual thing, spiritual being. That's Genesis chapter 2. So it's this perfect creature God put man uh, in the, the Garden of Ethan. But we are deceived by Satan. And we are just following our own thoughts and we're separated from God. So this everlasting power, instead of living in this everlasting power, we are living in this inability and laziness. And people are uh, suffering from all the delusion of uh, this 
the persecution and depression and they just come suicide. So for some reason, then they are unable to do anything and they are getting lazy doing things. You can turn off this heater. Then, in reality, we are spiritually dead. So we are just satisfying our all deeds. Uh, because we are spiritually dead, our life is leading to the physical satisfaction and pleasance. Separated from God, do they really think that they can find the true happiness in their lives if they are seeking the pleasant moments, but do you think that they can really find them? Without being satisfied, that they are living in vain. And they're seeking the spiritual uh, world on their own because they are spiritual beings. But in the end, they end up filled with all the all sorts of ghosts and evil spirits. But God will not let you live like this. He's trying to restore this for us. And God sent His only Son Jesus to us. Jesus came coming down this earth. He he solved all the problems based on this sin. He crushed all this background of Satan on the cross. So in the book of John, chapter nineteen thirty, said that he it is finished. So through Jesus Christ, he recovered. Jesus Christ recovered the image of God in men. So once we are spiritually died, but we are alive spiritually now. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, you are dead in transgression, in your transgression sins, and you were saved. We are spiritually alive. So while living this earth, through Jesus Christ, the God called us a child of God and as a child of God living on this earth and we have tremendous authorities to enjoy in the land of Eden they recover these blessings and these facts um, just occurred with his grace and his, his grace and mercy and we recover this image and his spiritual uh, the spirit is dwelling us and he recovered blessings and the spirit in us and it's more than the the perfect blessings in Eden. So he recovered these blessings in our hearts. So day by day, we must not forget these blessings. In Genesis chapter 1, 20 and 27 and all this authority and blessings and spirit what are the reasons that we can enjoy these things it's coming from above in other words he is giving these blessings from his throne so with this working of the blessings from the throne God's Spirit is with us and living on this earth and we received all the blessings from above and these tremendous blessings were given to us so from above all these blessings from the throne and all this uh, power transcending time and place and places and all the shining lights to world to three seven nations uh, are taking place so with this Power is not done by our own efforts, but by His grace. So day by day, you must not forget the things that you must not forget is that uh, the blessings from above. And whenever we worship and listen to His words and the working of the Holy Spirit, 
and the power of the throne, you must enjoy this day by day. Especially in this passage today, to Israel people, he said, very important words that if you are in failure, if you are in, in difficulties, you might uh, start a new thing. But the main passage says, says, do not forget the Lord to your God. And so the blessings from the throne and these tremendous blessings were given to us and he recovered this throne, the blessing of the throne and the, spirit, the blessing of the spirit and the blessings in the Eden were given to us then do not forget the one who gave every single blessing to us. So today, do not forget the Lord your God. The first thing that we want to take a look at is do not forget the Lord forever. What is the thing that you must not forget forever? Well, uh, Israel people living in the wilderness and God gave this covenant that they should never forget across, in, across the wilderness because there are so many things happening here and there in the wilderness. That is the field of the wilderness. So while living um, uh, walking uh, in the wilderness, God gave this covenant that Israel people must not forget. So in this, like this word, like the wilderness to us, God gave this covenant. And we are living in this world where that there is no guarantee and we, there are lots of fears. So God gives us this commitment that we never forget. So we will receive this answer today. The first thing that you must not forget is that you must not forget the Lord who gave you the gospel, gave you the words. Do not forget the Lord your God. God said so. 11, verse 11 says, take care of lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes which I command you today. You must not forget this forever and God gave us this, uh, the gospel and his words and do not forget his words and the Lord your God. That's right. God is giving us his words until now and day by day God is giving us his words and God is working with his words. Do not forget the Lord with his words. Do not forget him forever. Especially as time goes by, God is more sure. Um, God is giving us um, uh, the sure things, more sure things to us, more than yesterday, more than today, more than the future. God is giving us this very conforming messages, the surest messages to us. That is the fact that God is giving us the surest messages day by day. So the more you receive his uh, words, you will get to understand Jesus, the, the clearest things in this Bible. So the more you understand Jesus Christ, then the more you will find your identity. And the more you enjoy his words, then the more you will uh, find uh, um, the truthful messages in your life. And with these truthful messages with, in your life, and you will get into the gospel and share the gospel to others and to all everybody around you then you will be in the place that you can share the Gospels to the mission fields and your fields. God's words were given to you through Jesus Christ first. And God gave us this for to, to give His glory and grace. And God gave these messages to share others and to save others. And and while doing so, then you must fit yourself to his words. You first receive the answers and uh, his grace, and then you share the 
the worst, but in many cases, so many believers are confessing that they are not in the, not like、uh, God's words. His words, doesn't, his words don't fit them. So they just try to find the things that they can find themselves fitting it, in it. You must find it, you must understand it, even you don't understand, but you just say amen, amen to the words that you want to hear and you want to believe in. Then the They cannot understand, they cannot enjoy the blessing of his words in your field. How much you are beating yourself to his words, and how much you are you accustomed to his words. If you, as long as you are aligned to his words, then you can gain the power and you can. Be victorious in your field. If so, then the how can you feed yourself in his words? At the moment, God's words were proclaimed, then you must get, grab hold of, get hold of them. The, the elder today also gave the, the prayer that he said that you must grab hold of his words as yours. If you, you are、um, self centered, then just get out of it and、uh, like、uh, the praising team praise it, then you must follow the flow of his words and you must grab hold of his words and you must grab his words as your thoughts. That is your prayer. What is the reason that you must grab hold of his words as your thoughts? Because God is working on us. With his words. So today, if you are given his words, then you must grab hold of this as, as his thoughts. So it must be accomplished in your prayers. Day by day, you are given his words, and week by week, then you are given the p u p i n messages. So do not、um, lose hold of this message. Why? Because when you listen to his voice and if you are pleasant with his words, then for some reason, then your life will be completely changed. It, like everything is working really well.、Uh, Psalm chapter 1, verse 2 that who is del- delightful is、uh, his delight in, is in the law of the Lord. Do you think that this word is really delightful? You have some expectations to his words. The more you listen to his words and you, you think the more you are accustomed to his words, then you are spiritually alive. If you are angry with his words and you think that you are far from his words, then you hurry yourself to get into his words and to recover. His words in your life first. And to be delighted in His words, then you must stop everything, but you must recover His words first. Why? Psalm 119 92 is very important. Your law. If your law had not been your delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I would never forget your perception, for by them you have preserved my life. You must read it again. If your law had not been your delight, I would not perish, would have perished in our, my afflictions. If it's not your Delight, then you will be perish. You will perish. So you will never forget your precepts. Then you will. It will make your life. Then you can be alive with these words. Then you will never forget it. Before doing anything else, 
You must expect to listen to his words, and you must be delighted with his words first. If you are doing a lot of things and making your efforts, even the church、uh, work, but you must fit yourself to into his words.、Uh, even instructors, the pastors, assistant pastors.、Uh, for some reason, it's really, really important for them to think about this. That to fit yourself into his words. If you are alive, then this spiritual power will be. Passed to two other、um, others. So first, you must be delighted with his words first. Then you will、uh, gain his power and share this with others.、And、the more you are well, then、uh, eating well without his words, then you will. Become very proud. Verse、uh, chapter fourteen. Then your heart will become proud, and if you are not in the flow of the covenants, even you are making your efforts, you are very proud of yourself. And if you are not in the flow of His words, and everything. At the moment, you do not you didn't recognize this, but everything without his words is problematic. All these are problems. Then the problems will appear before your eyes. Do not lose hold of the flow of his words, and. The, You are as long as you are working for a church, then you must take your life for his words. If you lose all of his words, then verse seventeen, you may say to yourself, "My power and the strength of your hands will have will produce this wealth of for me." So without recognizing this, I did this. I did this with my ability. That is Genesis chapter three. The problems from Genesis chapter three. You might think that I can do this. Then you might misunderstand this. That Satan is making you、um, think like this. God has prepared the tremendous blessings up to the extent that. Remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and God will give you the wealth and conform. So conforms His covenants which He swore to your forefathers, as it is today. He has prepared all these tremendous blessings, and you be prepared for this. God says, then, but people might think that I just do this. I just. I just have done this, so I can do everything. That is very serious misconception. And、uh, when you are in poor situations, when you you when you might be in a poor and a very、uh, when you are rich, you know. In your life, then the moment you do not know the moment, but you are away from the Lord and just centering yourself. But when you are rich, the more you are rich, the richer you are, and then you must the more you must take the direction toward the Lord. First Corinthians chapter one ten verse twelve. Then you think you are standing firm. Be careful that you don't fall. If you think that you are boastful and you think that you can do everything, that God, Satan will attack you and try to make you fall down. And if you lose all of his words, verse nineteen says that you will follow other gods. So you must、uh, think about this: how important it is to grab hold of his words. 
once you get into the land of Canyon and the, the, you can find the life of idols and that's the worshiping idols where they are alive and they in the land of Canyon and all other worshiping other gods is their life. And in every field and every situation, and you might think that, that all these are idolizations and their lives is just focusing on the worshiping the idols. And all the cultures are centered in the idols. Then do, they actually do not know about this, um, the culture of idols. And our lives also is the same thing. It's out of the idols. What about, they are just following the other gods. What are the other gods were Bar and Ashira. Bar and Ashira, they are the god of richness. Mm, it's like eat well, eating well and living in a good condition. If you lose all of the concept, the true concept of the gospel, then you may seek the physical wealth. If you look at the bulletins and filling with the Holy Spirit and filling with the physical conditions, when you are filled with the physical conditions, then what are the prayer requests? And if you are uh, spiritually filled, then what are the, your prayer requests? If you are eat well and live well, and that the standard of the word extends into the standard of the church, so people are always talking about this. But what about the other religions? What are they talking about? What are, What is the difference between the religions and the gospel. What are the differences that when you wish in, make a wish in the Buddhist temple and in the church? So they are just following other gods and they lose hold of the, the truthful messages in the covenants. So you and I must not follow money because word is serving the God of money. So for money, they, they, can, they try to do, uh, step on to others to get more money because that's the standard of them. But we are not the one who follow after the word, the, the, the money. Uh, first Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. You're making efforts, making more money, and pursuing money. But once you lose hold of the truthful messages of the covenant, the gospel, then the money will follow after you. So you must follow after the Lord. Do not forget the Lord. Second, the things that you must not lose hold of. You must not forget. And God saved us out of the slavery of Egypt. Verse 14 says then, the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. That is the mystery of the gospel. When you are hopeless in the slavery of Egypt, the book saved us. So Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says that you are dead in your transgressions and sins, but you are saved. That means you are getting out of the slavery of Egypt. So while living on this earth, the more you enjoy the blessings of salvation, then you will be affluent in everything in your life with these words. And how can you recover everything? The more you enjoy the blessing of the gospel, um, that everything will uh, will revive in your life. Deuteronomy chapter 12, 13, 
says that you have eaten and full and have built good houses and live in them. And when your heart and flock multiply, and your silver and gold is multiplied. And all you that have is multiplied. And all you, all things you have will, uh, will be multiplied. But whenever you forget this, then God, the, the, the evil spirit tries to attack you. And whenever you forget this, then the forces of darkness will attack you. And Israel people decided to get out of Egypt, but the, the king Pharaoh denied, rejected this proposal. But after uh, the after the upon the coast, then they just were out of Egypt after the Passover. After the Passover, all. Israel people were out of Egypt, and with this gold they took from the Egypt, they just made the gold of idols. Uh, the Pharaoh said that with all these disasters, he, he said that you must get out of this land. Then once you receive the blessing of salvation, then you are saved. Once you are saved, then everything is done. Everything is finished. You must not forget this fact. God is the all solution of all the problems. You must not forget this. Especially, as you, even you become a child of God, I don't say that you must, you may have no problems. While living on this earth, even you are saved. Of course, you face the difficulties and problems. But the thing is that the the problem itself is not the problem. You will find the answers in them. So as a saved ones, you will find the answers in the problems. Last week, we had the conference in leadership and the conference in the Philippines. And the, the subject of this conference is about story, stories of Joseph. Even failure itself is God's will, and success itself is the God's plan. Of course, Joseph faced the difficulty. Um, the failures, but that was God's will, and he was successful. And also, and his success, there was a God's plan. So every single problem has his uh, own plan and his will. Even you don't understand this, but God, through you and me, God will do ev uh, everything for uh, the sake of the gospel. Do not. Be discouraged. Do not be disappointed with all the problems, because you know what? If you are uh, in depression with these problems, that means you are challenging God. You are fighting against God. In the problems, God's there are God's wills and plans, and be, don't be discouraged with this. And all every single. Detail of the problems, you are finding God's answers. You are out of the the um, the authority of Satan's and the darknesses and the sins. Nobody can solve this, but this power, nobody can save you out of the sins and transgressions. You cannot get out of this uh, the authority of Satan, but God saved us. So with this, um, this plan, that God will answer our prayers in the midst of difficulties. So in every situation, then you must be bold enough to go forward. God saved us out of Egypt. And the third, the third thing that you must not forget. 15, verse 15, he led you through the best and dreadful de desert, then the thirsty and waterless land, where these, you know, was snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. What does this mean? Even God is leading us in the waterless land. God uh, saved Israel people out of Egypt. The purpose of this is there was a 
very important purpose. That was God is revealing Himself that God is alive to all nations. God saved the Israel people, Arab, Egypt, and while in the wilderness, wilderness, so many problems happened, but God led them、um, to the land of Kenya because all the nations must know that God is alive. That is right. Even in the scorpions and snakes in the wilderness, nobody was harmed, hurt. But when they have the disbelief, then they got、uh, the snake bites. That means you must follow his words. And as long as you follow his words, everything is working in appropriate order, s and everything will be recovered. With this disbelief, then you will get the snake or scorpion bites. Even they are attacking you. If you are in, as long as you are in the flow of his words, then they may not fall down. You may not fall down. So, as long as you follow his words, then God is responsible for your all directions. So, in that, then it's, I'm not. The, be careful. You. I'm not talking about saying that you must be careful in everything, in danger, and all these worldly,、uh, dangerous things must be guarded. I'm not saying that you must be always fearful for these dangers. I'm saying that you must receive his power and authority from above, even you are not. Very careful about these dangers, God will reveal His power around you. So let's, let's come to the conclusion first. Everything, all the starting points of all matters is, the, your, is coming from your mind. If you are filled with worries and concerns, then it will be.、Um, Describing your thoughts, then you, this, your thoughts will be circulated to your body. You must put, you must scribe your, his words. You must have his salvation in your heart. Genesis chapter, chap,、uh, gen, the book of Genesis 2 17. Then it will be related to your spirit, your soul, and you, it will be related to your body and it will be related to your field. So the jury will corrupt it that had never fallen and they overcome the, all the 14 kings with these powerful words. Then, with these powerful words, then we can save this 500. 5,000、uh, nations, tribes do not get any other words but only the image of God, the, the living spirit, and the recovery of、uh, His words in our heart. Then we can reveal the evidence of His words. Do not put other things in your heart. You have to be such a short lifetime. You must change your thoughts in your mind and you might change your situations and the circumstances. Your mind and thoughts. What do you put in your mind and thoughts? And the second conclusion verse 14 says, Your heart. Be lifted up, you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. What does this mean? And God saved us, and did God let us、um, abundant life, enjoy the abundant life. And that's related to verse 17. Beware lest you say in your heart, power and your power and might. 
of my hand have gotten me this wealth. Do not have any fears around you, but God is guiding you even if you are boastful about yourself, then you do not know about this answer and do not be pleasant with um, this uh, answer itself. But the most important thing is that God is with us and you are in the flow of His words. Then you must be delightful, delighted with His. Do not be boastful about your answers and all the blessings itself, but you must find yourself that whether you are in the flow of his words, you must be delightful with the fact that you are staying within his words and you are in the flow of his words. And you might say that everything is not working well but, uh, for me, but it's not the problem at all. If you are away from his words and everything is working well, it's not absolutely not the fact that you everything is working well. You are in the flow of God and you must find yourself that God is with you. Then as long as you are staying within his words and his presence, that is the most important part in your life, in your walk of faith and you will find him in your life. Thank God your words and your salvation are with us and you saved us out of slavery and the wilderness God, God, led, God is leading us. Please let us not forget these things, these blessings. Please be with us and renew our strengths. Please help us stay within your words. I pray in Jesus' holy, wonderful name. Amen.